I think going into the fourth quarter, you were five of 17. Um, what is the mindset that you need to have to erupt for a 23 point quarter after, uh, I mean, just struggling throughout the first three? I mean, uh, you know, for those who have seen me play before, I normally like to, you know, off a shooting half like that, I normally like to reset, you know, just kind of come back down, you know, um, reset my mind, quick little meditation in my head, and um, just come back out focused. You know, I missed my first couple coming out, I were just really good looks, and, you know, the game would have been a lot easier if I made them in the first half, you know, so um, just come out focused and knock them down, don't lose any confidence or anything like that, just play my game and know that they're going to fall if I keep shooting them. Can you describe the zone you were in in the fourth quarter? 23, four three-pointers, and then obviously those two threes, uh, AD and uh, LeBron. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, once I see a couple go in, um, you know, I can get it rolling. So um, I was able to just find a little separation and just rise up over the top and uh, make some shots. I thought uh, Mike played great, you know, making shots. Um, Bruce. You know, everybody, I think everybody it wasn't really offensive game for most of the game, but on defense, everybody stepped up and made big plays. Jeff came in uh, with a big charge. Um, yeah, I can go down the line, but everybody had a moment uh, in the game defensively. Jamal, we've heard teammates say that you've come back from the injury, a more complete player, a better playmaker. Tonight, I think you flashed a little bit on the defensive end. Can you take me through that last steal? Looked like a lob pass they were throwing up, and you swatted it out, and you ended up in... MPJ's uh, three that put you guys up 12? You're talking about the weak side, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I, d I just saw LeBron trying to move him up the lane, and um, I knew that if I could, I could get there if I, if I went for it. I didn't, if I didn't, you know, you know um, try for another word for half-ass it, but um, I just had to go for it and just jump for it. Um, and just, I know if I get a hand on the ball, you know, my team would be able to grab it. So I just hit out the air and... Um, was able to go down the other way. Jamal, this series looks and feels exhausting just watching it. And in that fourth quarter, you had two steals. You're pushing the pace up the floor. You're dealing with this illness. Like, what does it take to find that energy at, in a moment like that after how physical the series is? Yeah, and we in Denver. Air's thin out here. Um, you know, but it's just grit and grind. You know, you don't want to lose a game. You try to you try to leave it all out there, and you don't know, you don't want to regret it when you go back home. Yeah, I could have just you know ran a little harder to the corner and give somebody open shot. Um, I could have, you know, like I said, jumped for the ball and get a steal. So it was just you know mentally making that switch and committing to committing to it. And uh, you know you know it'll pay off if if you put out the hard work. So um, I think we all I think you know Joker was exhausted too. Uh, we all were tired, and um, but we got it out, and and uh, we know that they were tired as well. Uh, we play in Denver a lot, and. Uh, they don't as much, so we know, you know down the stretch, even if we're tired, they'll be just as tired or even more. Coach said he thinks you only need to see one go in before you can get going. And after you made that mid-range jumper, you kind of looked to the heavens like, thank goodness I finally got one to go. And then he said it looks like you're shooting into a hula hoop at that point. What does it feel like for you? Is that an accurate assessment? Yeah, it just uh, just becomes a practice shot, you know, whatever shot you take. You know, I practice all the shots that you see me make and take, so. Um, you know, you could be shooting in a in a spot, you know, in practice, and you miss four, five, six in a row, you know, and then all of a sudden, you just lock in, and you take you take a step back, you reset, you refocus, and you go back and make you no know, ten in a row, it's like it's nothing. So it's just about resetting your mind. It's all mental, in in my opinion. And um, like, yeah, I was able to do that again tonight. Jamal, uh, after game one, everyone was talking about how. The Lakers made that great run. They had all the momentum coming in, and everyone was talking about the Lakers as if they were the ones that won game one. As players, hearing that and seeing how people are still learning about you guys as a team, how That's much crazy. did that motivate you guys? Or how much extra motivation did it give you? Um, you know, you try not to look into it, you know. Um, people are going to talk. People are going to have their assumptions and um, what they should do and, you know, the adjustments they should make. Um, you know, if they see something working, they're going to adjust, and we're going to adjust as well. You know, it's a series. We're going to go back and forth. We're going to make adjustments the next game. We're going to watch film and change stuff up, you know, so they're going to do the same. Um, so it was game to game is different. You know, I remember we were playing Phoenix, and Coach said in the locker room, uh, one game was one something, and then the other one was 97-87, you know, so every game is going to be a little different. Um, you just got to commit to it. And if it's a defense game, then you got to lock down and play defense, uh, make timely shots, and uh, – 
Yeah, the outside noise, the outside noise. We're the Denver Nuggets. We're used to, we're used to that. We used to, even when we win, they talk about the other team. We beat the Clippers in the bubble. They talk about the other team. You know, same, same, same old, same old. It just fuels us a little more, and um, it'll be sweeter when we win the chip. Jamal, you've talked about the playoffs being the time where guys step up. You have four fourth quarters of 20-plus points in the playoffs. That's the most since 1997. Second place is Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson with two. What is it about the fourth quarter that you love? Um, when I was little, I used to, you know, count down the seconds and in, in of the shot clock and, and uh, make the shot and uh, talk like Marv Albert and uh, talk like Mike Green, you know what I'm saying? Just, just the imagination running as a kid. So, you know, when you get in that moment and, you know, you see your fam in the crowd, you see your little brother, um, you see Mike Green there, you know, you see all these little reminders. Um, they all pay dividends and uh, uh, make that moment a little more special and uh, just kind of lock you back in. You know, you want to miss that opportunity. And sometimes it's just reflecting on those moments and, and remembering how fun it was to do that and be able to miss, uh, not miss the stage. Um, playing in the Western Conference Finals against the Lakers and LeBron James is it's an amazing opportunity and, and it's something you can look back in history and um, and remember for the rest of your life. Um, so I just try to make the most of them, and, and it's fun when you got it going like that and forth. When you hit that three over LeBron, they call timeout. You wave your hands out to the yard. What are you thinking? Because I saw you look into the crowd, and you hear the crowd roaring. What was going through your head? Uh, just like I got it, you know, like I found a, I found the rhythm I needed to find. Um, I, I think when I hit the, the three on the right wing was a good shot, and then the three on AD was the one where I was like, okay. I found the mark, you know, I found the target, and um, just kept finding it. Well, when, I mean, you've taught, you've alluded before about meditation. When you meditate and reset and lock in, what is, what is going through your mind at halftime when you're just trying to maybe decom I don't want to put words in your mouth, but maybe decompress. Um, it, it, it depends on what's happening. You know, sometimes I need to settle the hell down, and sometimes I need to wrap myself up, you know, so it just depends on, on what's needed in the game. Um, and um, tonight I just had to just reset completely. You know, I'm, the the first half, the second half, three that I had, the open one, the wide open one, um, I alligator armed it. Now that just shows me that I'm overthinking it. And there's no reason for me to overthink an open shot. So once I missed that one, and I came up short on the mid range, I said, okay, I gotta you know, settle down even more. I'm, I'm overthinking about the shot too much. So it's, it's all mental practice, man. I've been, you know, having bad halves and then a crazy second half for the rest of my life. So. I, I know how to change it. I know what to adjust. And um, I want to put together a good four quarters. Jamal, I think it was um, game one of the Minnesota series. You hit a three. I think you turned to the crowd and said something like, we're ready for this. We've been waiting for this. Tonight, was this an example of just like you guys being ready for the moment, especially with how that first half went and just kind of the, the termination and, and mental toughness that you needed to battle back? Was this just an example of you guys kind of being ready for, for, for the moment here in the playoffs? Yeah, I think even when we're struggling, like we don't, we don't lose belief in what we can do. You know, we play like the number one seed and we believe we're the number one seed um, and we back it up. So even when we're struggling, you know, we're a resilient team. We know how to, like I said, adjust and just reset and focus. And we get a couple stops. I think Kay hit a big three and they called timeout. Um, so, yeah, sometimes just a couple of possessions that can change the whole game and it's just an energy thing, you know. Um, I thought we had a lot of belief in our ability to, to rally tonight and, and get the dub. Last one. Jamal, I feel like when you have a great performance, people always recall you in the bubble. Um, but you are only 26. You are still writing a story. I feel like maybe people should not always recall the past because you are still doing it right now. What is it for you? But do you think like the past performance gives you energy and you recall it as much? Yeah, I mean, the bubble is what, 2020? And it's 2023? So, I mean, I'm coming off injury and I'm playing decent. So, um, I think I think the years speak for itself. Coming off injury and be able to, you know, come back to the level at least and, and play this way. Um, I think I don't really need to comment on it on it as much anymore. Thank you, Jamal. Appreciate it.